Good evening. As we're continuing our study of words that define our Christian faith, tonight we're discovering um, the term resurrection. And that's a, per that's a perfect time of the year now to be studying this because this Sunday is Easter. So I want to tell you a little bit about this. Go ahead and be turning in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. And I want to talk about resurrection for a minute. The resurrection is an essential doctrine of our faith because through resurrection, our salvation is now possible. And this Sunday is our celebration of Easter, the resurrection of Jesus. Now, this was an absolutely life-changing, world-changing event. And this was not something that was kept secret. In fact, Jesus' disciples spread this word about Jesus' resurrection all over the world. Now, Paul, who is the writer of 1 Corinthians, was not physically present at the resurrection, but he still has a lot to say about it. And I'm going to begin reading at verse 1. He says, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance to the scriptures. Now, he talks about the gospel. The gospel is literally, the word gospel literally means good news. So he says, I preach this good news to you. And he says, you're, if you're holding fast to this, he says, you understand what it means to be saved. He says, I told you the first important thing, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now, our gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, bear witness to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. But they're not the only people that tell about Jesus' um, death, burial, and resurrection. I want to read you four names. And these four people are also people who are part of the historical record. The first one is Tacitus. He is a Roman historian. Josephus, who is a Jewish historian. Lucian of Samosota, who was a Greek writer, and then Mara Bar Serapion, who was a Roman writing to his son. And all four of these writers, nine Christians, give us the account about Jesus dying and coming back from the dead. Now, if all of these pagan writers told the same story that the gospel writers tell us, we understand that Jesus' resurrection was an accepted part of the historical record of the time. Continuing with what Paul says in verse 4, he says that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance to the scripture. Now, Paul emphasizes the fact that Jesus was buried. He was put in a tomb. You bury the dead, you don't bury the living. So Jesus was really dead. His death and his burial show us the consequences of sin. But Jesus didn't stay dead. Notice that Paul says he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Jesus himself had mentioned something about that third day in dealing with the sign of Jonah. Remember that Jonah was in the belly of the big fish for three days. And this being raised on the third day was part of the prophecies in dealing with the resurrection of Christ. Now, the fact that he died and was buried shows the consequences of sin. Not Jesus' own sin, but ours that he took on. But in overcoming death in the grave, he overcomes our sin. The last part of this, of this uh, account, is 1 Corinthians 15, 5 through 8. It says, he appeared to Cephas, that is Peter, and then to the twelve. He appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, although some have fallen asleep. And then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Now, Paul is just matter-of-factly giving reference to the eyewitnesses of the resurrection. He talks about Peter. He talks about the other disciples. He talks about um, 500 people at a time. And he says most of whom are still alive. Basically, he is saying to his audience, you know who Jesus appeared to. 
You can even talk to them today to, to understand this. And you maybe even knew them personally. Uh, I like the fact that he talks about that he appeared to James. Now, James mentioned here is James, the brother of Jesus. And we know that at the time of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, James was not a believer. But he, came a, he became a believer very quickly and, in fact, was the leader of the church at Jerusalem. And that is a very important thing that Paul knew that his audience would have known about. These are eyewitnesses. And there's nothing like eyewitness testimony. Think about the things that you have been an eyewitness to. We are living in a time right now that we will always remember that we are eyewitnesses to history being made as we are dealing with this coronavirus. Now, the challenge for you this week and in this Easter season, how does your life reflect the knowledge of Jesus' resurrection? In other words, what does it mean to you that Jesus conquered the grave? What does it mean to you that sin no longer has to have a grip on your life? The second thing I want you to think about is how have you been resurrected? What in your life has Jesus brought back to life? What, how were you dead? And how have you been resurrected? I'm closing tonight with a prayer for all of us. I know that we're all in tough times, but uh, keep connected. Talk to your friends. FaceTime with people. We can even have a Zoom meeting if y'all want to at some point. Um, remember to pray for uh, each other. Pray for the prayer requests that people have. I know we're continue, continually praying for Riley Clare's great-grandfather, but I'm sure that there are others. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Lord, I ask you to be with all of our youth at this time. Lord, help us in these days when we are so far apart, draw close together and draw close to you. And Lord, we just ask that you bless the words that I have said in these, this time of Easter season, Lord, that we can see the resurrection of you in our lives. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.